Okay, hello and welcome back. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank Hans Schumann for the uh, donation to the LRTV of some rather stout axle stands. A job we've got to uh, free them off first. This is Hans himself, uh, a keen off-roader and uh, Land Rover enthusiast, uh, standing on his uh, bumble. Hans has been uh, fairly busy recently and uh, one of these has been uh, getting his off-roader back up to spec because it's uh, fallen to bits. And if you'll remember in, uh, well, a little while ago, we actually welded up some uh, uh, an axle with a diff pan and some uh, trusses to uh, strengthen it up. Axle, the front axle casing, well, the whole axle's been rebuilt now uh, up on his off-roader and you can see the sort of abuse that it will get. So it's a welcome modification for him. In the workshop, and I also have to say uh, thank you very much to Neil Enzer of uh, 4B4 Before. We have a retractable uh, extension lead. Okay, maybe not a big deal, but it is if you have lots of cables about on your floor. This um, stops them from uh, getting welding spatters and um, being unserviceable too quickly. Uh, it's an excellent piece of kit. And this, you, uh, you'd have to contact uh, Neil Enzer at 4B4 Before and uh, see what you can get but you but you can see this is actually a decent piece of equipment it has a lock and it has a retractor and this is possibly what you'd find if you know what it's like when you have uh, retractable oil um, siphons for uh, filling engines etc yeah, it's pretty good i'm very impressed with this thank you neil for this and also these uh, are not being made redundant they're all part and parcel of uh, the equipment the other piece which i got off him is a uh, mig torch stand now okay you might not think this is necessary until you put your mig torch down and it sets itself off this is an excellent holder very handy you keep by your workplace so you can see sometimes it will uh, you put the torch down and it sets the trigger off and it's not that good these have a life of their own these uh, torch uh, cables and such like so yeah there we go that's um from 4b 4x4 all right, check them out on their website. Right, Neil also dropped us off a bulkhead project, which is going to be uh, interesting, to say the least. Um, this is almost beyond economical repair because it is rotted so badly. Now, some of you guys will think, yeah, yeah, I've seen this and I've had to change my bulkhead. This possibly is saveable and... Uh, even though it is rotted through on the top here, you can get the parts for them. I'll just give you a little guided tour to see actually how bad this is. It's, uh, well, yeah, the tin worm has got to the top part more than to the bottom, even though the foot wells are starting to go. You can see that on the passenger side. And up here, well, all of this where it's rusted, you can be assured that it'll be rusted with at least two inches beyond where you can see the corrosion. All right, so you get a fair idea of what's going on here. Now, I've got to price this up, and I'm not 100% sure whether we can do all of this, but I'll do some welding tutorials on this. However, YRM, uh, we all know them and we all love them because they do get us out of the poo from time to time. They do bulkhead parts. Now, just uh, go into the menu and click on bulkhead and uh, Land Rover 90 or 110. So you have a wide variety of bulkhead um, parts, and this is left-hand and right-hand drive. And um, somewhere in this lot, you will actually find uh, the top sections. Not this part here. You, you've got portions for repair on the top part, but there is the whole of the, the vent grills or the, or the vent panels, if I can just find that on page two. Yeah, here we are. So... Um, you also get the rain channels and other repair parts. Uh, rain channel here, okay. And um, right, okay, we don't need those, we need these. Vent panel repair, and that's per pair, not a whole section, so there's two bits to it. Uh, if I just click onto that, I'll just show you what else is on the page first. Nuts and bolts and fixings and such like. I'll click onto here. And what you see is what you'd think is a whole section, but it's not. They're two halves. But that's good enough. So we're looking at 90 quid. Or is it 80 quid? 80 quid for the uh, the two parts. Okay. Um, that's 1.2 thick finished uh, matte black powder. Um, it's got vents, or the hinges for the vents, ready to be spot welded on. Okay. 
So there's two holes for the uh, door hinge, which, yeah, OK, I think this is, uh, this is actually viable. So uh, hang on, I'll just go back one, and you can see these are the two halves. So you buy the two, you get them a little bit cheaper. So basically, you'll have to give me time to um, get the money together to do this. Obviously, it's uh, S is not a cheap project, and uh, they'll come up. The bulkhead repairs will come up um, as and when I have the finances to do. I'm sorry about that, but this is the way we are at the moment. I do have certain issues now. I just want to show you this. Um, yeah, footwell repair panels in stainless steel. Brilliant. How about that? Stainless steel, of course, can be welded to mild steel just using a normal MIG welder without any problems. Right, so the D2 project, yeah, okay. Um, sorry about these people who have died of old age waiting for me to do something about this. I've changed my mind. Well, actually, no, I haven't made up my mind. I've been looking at this, which is a very interesting project that will give me access to the chassis to weld it. Uh, Nathan here is, well, he's uh, rocking on with his. You can see that in his back garden. And, uh, yeah, it's a good idea. I'm, uh, I'm keen on this. As I say, I haven't made up my mind. Uh, looking at long range of 4 before. Yeah, they do all sorts of bits and pieces which help you modify your discos or, or your Range Rover. Okay, so that's the name. You can see that um, if you have a browser, leave the uh, link below. Have a look at their website if you're interested. A Discovery Cab Kit for a Series 2, about 500 quid. This is a cab kit which obviously it doesn't give you the full length of the back. Um, I'll just show you this. This is what you're looking at. Okay, um, so you'd have to fabricate the bottom half possibly, and then this is aesthetics more than anything. You, you get other panels as well. Well worth a look, and it's about 500 quid presently. Um, it's fiberglass. Now, the Discovery 2 tray back back is about 700 odd quid, nearly 800 quid. And you can see what you're getting with this the roof and the panels on the side. Yeah, I'm sort of, I've got a semi hard on about this. It's, it's a good idea, but um, at the same time, it's obviously expense. Now, um, looking at this, you can see what sort of effect you get. This is a very professional finish. Obviously, you can paint it over, make your vehicle look right, and it would look roadworthy more than anything else as well, if you're going to go that way. Um, yeah, you've all seen them, haven't you, on the internet? Uh, the guys in, in the Oz that have done the, the tray backs or the utes, as they were. Um, basically, you're just having a truck cab, whereas you've got a tray back here. This is a nice little example, shortened just for off-roading, and yes, I've considered this as well. Your Defender owners, obviously you've got a head start because you can just have a truck cab and then you can make a uh, buck to go on the back, which is a no-brainer, really. Um, the tray back, obviously, for the Defender. I found this little uh, uh, how-to-do from a magazine in PDF form on the internet, Practical LRO, and it does show you uh, bits and pieces to use um, getting them from Devon 4 before, but this is quite expensive. As you can see here at the back of Hans's motor, this is, uh, well, it's, it's a very well done uh, space frame tray back. And the Americans go one better. Well, do they? They do some really nice uh, rear end conversions. Now, these are all homemade. This was found off a forum on uh, Facebook. And this one, I'll leave a link to this guide. This one is a welder's truck, and I'm very, very impressed with this. It's sort of. Uh, well, it's easy to make the frame if you know what you're doing. Now, the guy, uh, Optimal Welding, he's on YouTube, and uh, he'll show you actually how to make this, and there are fringe benefits from watching his tutorial, and I'll give you an idea how to make a bumper. Now, on my channel, I have started a playlist, Trayback Videos. It's just stuff for inspiration you can see here. I've put a few on there of guys that have uh, been good enough to put videos onto YouTube so we can have a look because there are no plans to be held or found, so that, should I say. Now, Optimal Welding's tray back, it looks something like this, and I'm like, yeah, this is a good idea to do on the back of a discovery. So the other option, of course, is to cut the body off, leave the bulk head and floor pan and build a space frame around it. Now, I'm still open to doing this because... It would actually be cheaper because, after all, it's just metal. You just uh, bend it where you need to and weld it into place so you make yourself a frame. Now, with these uh, 
sort of frame, you've got yourself an off-roader. And uh, to be honest with you, this would be my preferred option, possibly. And the video uh, showing this is also in that playlist. Okay, so the ALRC issue, um, a document which you can find on the internet really quickly. Now, this shows you how to make a standard roll cage, so it is a passable um, for the scrutineers if you're going to go off-roading in any type of group. And this also is applicable to uh, making roll cages uh, for your own use, even if you don't, and this is worth looking at. I think, to be honest with you, LRTV could get so much mileage out of this that we would make a, a thousand videos on all the techniques, obviously. Uh, we've got to do something with this uh, rolling wreck because it, while it's sitting here, it's actually uh, losing metal out of the chassis. And it's taken me a, a long time to get around to almost deciding what to do. So I'd, I'd like to hear your opinions about it, what you think... Um, obviously would be the best for this I, i've near enough made up my mind i just need a little bit of a push now so have you say in the comments below i've also had my son come to live with me permanently um this is just a recent thing I'm, obviously I've, I've been stressed out for the last six months trying to organize things and you can see i've actually got him on the welder and uh, some of the uh, first welds were, were terrible and he's actually picked it up very very quickly He's yet got to write his name. I, I did mind to show you, show him how to do it. And uh, we're going to bring him on board in the LRTV slowly. Um, probably in the next video, we'll uh, see his progress from uh, welding from nothing to actually writing his name. And then we'll get him on to weld up a space frame, possibly.